Hello dear students, my name is Ganesh, I am an architect and I have graduated from NIT Trichy and I have done my post graduation from IIT Roorkee and I have been a part of the IAC team for the past few years and today I would be covering the topic of architectural aptitude which is a core component in your NATA and JEE examinations. So without further ado, I would like to start off with a few sample questions which we have prepared for today and I would go through each of those questions, touch upon the topics that we will be covering over the larger period of the course and discuss regarding that. Okay, so the first question is uh, deals with architectural concepts. So the question asks, what does the image given below primarily illustrate? So we have a section of a building. We have arrows depicting wind movement, which is coming in from the sides into the windows and traveling upwards and leaving through this tall chimney structure, right? So this is a certain effect of ventilation and how the temperature is regulated within a space. So the options that we have are staff, stack effect, evaporating cooling, Zeeman effect and thermal cooling. So evaporative cooling and thermal cooling have something to do with mechanized uh, versions of uh, cooling and Zeeman effect is something which is uh, has to do something with magnetic things. This particular thing is the stack effect. So these are concepts which you learn further in your course. but. Uh, having a basic understanding of what they are helps you in your exams. The next question again is a simple one. It, there's an image of a particular window here and the question is simply what is the type of window shown in this image. So you have your four options, an awning window, lured window, casement window and a bay window. So there are many types of doors and windows and in this particular exam, uh, question we have four options. This particular window is the awning window. For further uh, idea, a lowered window is something that looks like this. Uh, there's a window and uh, there are slats throughout, commonly seen in bathrooms, bathroom ventilators. And a casement window is your regular standard window with door shutters. This, these are the most common type of windows you would see in a residence or any building for that matter. And a bay window is something which is projected out of the wall itself. So from a top view, if these are the walls, this is how a bay window would look like. So what happens is it brings in more lighting and provides an interior space as well. So this particular question, the answer is awning window, right? Moving on. Again, another sim similar question. The question is uh, the type of arch in the given picture is called. You have four options. So again, it helps to know the different types of arches. And in this particular case, we have four options and this one is a segmental arch. Why segmental? Because this particular curve that you have here is a segment of an arc. The other options that we have is a semicircular arch, which is a no brainer. It's a straight up semicircle. Then there's a flat arch, which goes simply like this. And there's a pointed arch, which again is quite self explanatory, right? Let's move on. So in your examinations, these are the type of questions that you would have in multitude. This question in particular deals with the topic of perceiving 3D objects in a 2D space. So three dimensional objects cannot be represented on a 2D sheet on a 2D piece of paper. So how that is done is through multiple drawings. You have different projections, you have different ways of doing it. And this particular projection is called an orthogonal projection which has to do with 90 degree angles. You are either looking at the object from the top or the front or the side and depending on where you are looking uh, at the object from, you get different views. So in this particular question, the figure shows the top view of an object. Looking in the direction of the arrow, identify the most appropriate elevation from the given answer figures. 
So we have the top view of our object over here and we can see that there are 1, 2 and 3. There are 3 circular planes, concentric circular planes that we can see here and this arrow is denoting the direction of the observer. So now we have 4 options here. What we do is basically we try to visualize this So we have four options here. What we do is we try to figure out how these options would look from the top view. So in the first option, I have a circular cylinder on top. So I would have the first surface here. Then there is an inverted cone. So this becomes my second frame. And below that I have a flat cuboidal structure which could be my phase 3 but notice that we have a line here. What this line will denote is that it's a hard edge. So this most probably is a shape like this and it does not match with our question. So option A cannot be the answer. And if you further uh, look, at, look at all the other options in the same way, again you notice that this particular shape has a line here. So again it's uh, either a diamond shape object or it has an edge there, it's, it's, it could be a pyramid, triangular prism. So we have to look for no edges because they are all circular profiles, there would be no edges and option C and D meet that criteria. But in option D what's happening is that the bigger surface is on top, the smaller surface comes on bottom and then there's the larger surface. So this cannot be the answer because number two, the surface number two is not going to be visible from top. So we have our answer option B. Here we have plane 1, plane 2 and plane 3 when visible when viewed from top this is what we would be seeing right. Moving on and since this particular topic is the most primary one in your entire exam uh, during your entire course a lot of importance is given to this. Again we have a question, figure shows plan of an object, looking in the direction of the arrow identify the correct elevation from given answer. So in this example now I would like to show how to actually project and draw an elevation from a given top view. So we have our options here, so we know that it has three levels and the sizes of each levels we have a rough understanding. Okay. So when we are viewing this object from the front, what I will do is I will mark the surfaces which will be visible from the front. So these are the faces I would see from the front. Now I will project these lines down and what happens is that I have a flat base and since there is a hard edge in the middle, I will have a line here. right? And then the next plane that I am seeing is a single flat plane and line projected from there I have the particular shape over here. And now the third particular shape on uh, in the top view this is what it looks like. It is a square with two diagonals. So this is the top view of a square pyramid wherein the top edge is denoted by the center point of the diagonals. So I will do the same projection and mark where this particular shape comes up to. And so this is how it forms. And now notice that I won't have any lines in this triangular face because I don't have any edges on the front. I only have edges on the sides. So now all I have to do is match this sketch to my options and by taking a quick look I know that option B is my answer. right? So these options are designed to confuse you. They have an edge here which cannot be possible because the pyramid is not rotated like that. In, if at all the pyramid was placed this way then we would have seen this edge but our pyramid was placed in that manner so we do not see that line. 
Further, we have this line here. Here, we again have two lines and there are no edges here, which leads us to the easy uh, conclusion that option B is our answer. Moving on, again, the similar manner. So, now that we already saw how to do the process, I'm just going to quickly draw how this will look like. So, I have a flat rectangular base upon which is a this particular shape that you can see. So, what I will do is I will try to match with the things here. This shape denotes large rectangle uh, cubes, but I don't have cubes there. This is a slight match, but notice that there is a smaller plane within a larger plane. So, what this means is that as the object is coming up, it is becoming smaller in profile. So, it has to be one of these two, right? So, it has to be one of these two. And now, since I had already sketched out the base, I know that there are not going to be any hard edges along this particular base. So, among the two options, option D is what suits our case the most. Oh. Right, where was I? Okay. So, we know that option D is the most closest to our answer and if we do project these lines down and try to sketch how this would look like, we would realize that it does end up into a trapezoid shape which has a line in between, there is a hard surface there. Okay. Right. Again, we have a three dimensional object visible here. and. Unlike the previous questions, this is no longer a top view. This is no longer a parallel projection drawing. This is an isometric view. An isometric view of a three dimensional object. And what happens is that even though this is an image on 2D plane, we have to visualize this in three dimensions. So we have one face on this side, one face on this side, one face on the top and three more faces hidden that we cannot see. right? So, in this particular question, they have asked us to identify the correct top view. Okay. So, I will go ahead and look at the top face of this object. So, what I see is this particular elongated plus shape thing. So, I look at all my options and I realize that the central plus is there in all of them. Right. And now, I notice that at this place, there is a lower level surface and also at this corner which means I will have squares on both the left bottom and the right top corners. So, I have squares on the left bottom and right top corners over here. But what now I will notice is that this the face which is facing towards the observer does not have anything this entire length is scooped out. So, we are not going to have any object there and it is safe to assume that on the other side as well that is the same scenario and in the center we have a opening. So, now what we have to look for are these two shorter faces on the opposite sides and these two scooped out edges with the central hole and when we look at all the options we find out that option A matches it most appropriately. Why? Because the other options there is this particular diagonal line here which indicates there are two separate faces there which is not the case. Also the central hole is missing. Here we have none of the shorter sides done and here we have all four sides done which means the scoop out is not there which leads us to the conclusion that option A is the answer in this question. Again similarly we have a different kind of object here now. In this particular case what happens is they have given us the 3D view of the object and they are asking us to draw the view that we get from looking in this direction. So, when I am looking at this direction, I am going to identify the faces which will be visible to me directly. So, that would be this face, this face 
this face and this face. So I have total of one, two, three, four faces, right? Let me just number that. So that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. Okay. So what happens is now I am going to try and find these particular faces here. Okay. I'll start with one. So on the left most, I have this really tall rectangle. So upon looking at all the options, I can narrow down C and D because they are the only ones which have this entire rectangular face on the left edge. Okay. And then we have face number two. Okay, so face number two is a wide rectangle and so is three a continuation of that rectangle but is separated by this particular face so there would be a hard divide between them and when we look at these two options we notice that it is the case we do have a hard divide in between them and we have our one two three but if you notice now in d we have an extra face which is not going to be visible here we do not have any structure at this area for it to be visible there and now if we look at option c carefully we notice that this is face number four so we have the exact match in option c so this is how you go about identifying faces right moving on Okay, similar question again and this time we are looking from this direction. So in this direction I will again go ahead and identify the faces that would be visible to me. So this is 1 and this is 2. So I just have two simple faces and by just looking at the options I know C is the answer. Right? Moving on we have a shapes get more and more complex in the exam sometimes you get simple shapes sometimes you have more difficult ones and the more difficult and complex a shape gets the more you have to pay attention to the detail that's there and the faces the edges so you have to be careful of that so in this particular case again i will be viewing from this particular direction now next step i identify the faces that i would be seeing so it's this then there is this L-shaped face over here and then there is these two smaller rectangles and I know that I will not be able to see anything else here. So simple cross check with the options, I know C is my answer, okay. <coughs> right, moving on. We have again a similar looking face and few options. We will just go ahead and continue with the same process of identifying faces. So once you have identified your faces, what you can actually do is try and figure out Once you have identified your faces, you can try and figure out which one, will, which one of the options is the right answer by just simply sketching these three faces in your sheet. So this is my bottom most shape, right? And then I have a smaller rectangle above this edge of the same size. And then I have an overall upside down L shape which is encapsulating the rest of this space. And now simple cross check leads me to the conclusion that option D is my answer. Okay. Moving on. Now here are where things start to get a little tricky. In this particular 3D object you are not visible. I mean. In this particular 3D object, certain faces of this shape are not visible. 
and you have to use your visualizing power to try and figure out how it looks like. So in this particular case, they are asking us for the top view. Right now, I am only able to see one, two and a little bit of the third face. But I also will be able to see this circular profile over here and logically I can figure out that there is this slanting slope of the other side which will also be visible. So I have basically one, two, three and four rectangles laid out neatly. And then I have to figure out where this circular thing will come. So now I'll go ahead and look at my options. When I look at my options, there uh, I know that there are no lines like this. There is no separation here. There's no divide there. So it cannot be option A. Option C again has the same problem. Option D has this uh, chimney structure on the left face, which is this one. But we know that it's on the other side. So by logic, we know B is the answer here. Now again, similarly, we have a 3D object. There are options here. We need to find out the top view, right? So what we know from here is that this is a triangular roof thing. So we have two faces here. Again, this is a triangle roof. So we will have two more faces here. And because this is a pyramid, we will have four faces there. So if I just basically sketch this out, I have the square part here then the connecting section here and then this particular structure over here and when i notice the ridge lines i can figure out the roof lines cross check with my options available i know option c is the answer here okay so let's move on from 3d objects architecture is a lot more than just drawings on paper. End of the day, buildings that are constructed will have architecture in them. And it is very interesting to see the number of principles, the design principle, the architecture principles that are employed in the construction of a single structure. So in this particular example, we have the image of a primary health center in Dharmapuri as an award-winning project designed by the architectural firm Flying Elephant in Bangalore. And the question is asking us to identify four most appropriate architectural components. Okay. So we have a list of architectural uh, concepts here from which we need to identify which ones Okay. So we have a list of principles and elements here and we need to identify which ones have been incorporated in this particular design. So let's go from the top. So the first one is called is a hip roof. A hip roof is basically a roof like this. So we know that that is not the case here. So option A is out. Second is rainwater gutter. A rainwater gutter is primarily used at the edge of roof, slope roofs like this to collect all the rainwater that falls and it can be safely either uh, stored or drained away from the site. So in this particular case, if we look at it, the roof is this way. It's sloping inwards. So logic dictates that they would need a rainwater gutter in the center to collect all that water and move it safely out of the site. So this is one that has been employed here. And next we have tiled roof. We can see the underside of the roof. But if you notice, the frames are so far spaced apart that there is no way that they can have tiles on top. So we can, uh, we can eliminate tile roof as an option as well. Then we have steel frame. And if we do notice, these are all steel members. The entire structure is built on steel. So steel frames is again a component that we can find here. And next we have a deep overhang. What a deep overhang means is when you have say a room like this and you have a roof. Sometimes in some cases what happens is that 
they, the roof is projected very much out of the building line. So there is a kind of a semi open space created at this point and this entire part of the roof is said to be overhanging. And in this particular case, we can see that that's not the case because the steel members are going and connecting almost at the edge of the roof. There is not much of a overhang. Then we have thatch shading panels. So thatch shading panels. If you notice carefully here, there are these brown panels which are providing shade to the structure inside. So yes, this has been employed and a fiberglass roof hard to tell those look like sheets on a steel frame and then we have stone masonry and staircase there are no visible staircases in this frame and but if you notice that the entire compound wall on both sides has been done with stone so stone masonry is your fourth component so with this we have all four components identified with more information, with more details, maybe we could find that this was probably done with glass roofs or there is a staircase inside. But with whatever detail you can grab from this particular image is what you are going to try and answer. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. In this particular question, you have four images on the right side. The question is, if a table three feet high is placed right in front of you, and you are viewing the table from five and a half feet eye level, how will the table be seen in perspective? Identify from the given choices. So what they are saying is, there is a table which is three feet tall, okay? So this table is three feet tall. And then there is a person who is standing right in front of it. And looking at the table from a height of 5 feet 6 inches. So this is the scenario that the question is talking about. And when we look at a table from this particular height, what happens is that we will look at the table in perspective and the nearer edge would appear bigger, the far edge would appear smaller, right? Because this is closer, this is much farther away foreshortening happens foreshortening is a concept of perspective views and those four images are all in perspective except for c c is completely parallel this not this cannot be the case now a again cannot be the case because the nearer edge is short and the farther edge is wider which is not true for this particular case because we know that the nearer edge should be larger so we are now caught between b and d now which among these two would be the right answer to determine that what we have to do is we have to find out the vanishing point so i projected the lines to the vanishing point and also do the same for the legs right in this case So this is what is happening. So what now I will figure out is that this leg right. So what happens is that when objects are in level they are in the same plane they follow the same perspective lines. So when we look at these two options we can easily tell that both these legs are not following the same perspective because the back legs shorter side are not matching up. Let me just show that to you in clearly. This is the line and this is one line. So they don't match up here. But in this particular case, the legs match up. Right? So our answer is D because this meets all the criteria the front edge is wider the rear edge is shorter and both the legs are properly in perspective okay moving on once again we have a particular concept of architecture in terms of space making so this is a 
day lighting example so what happens is lighting and ventilation are very important concepts in architecture they are very important principles when it comes to designing a structure and there are many ways of bringing in wind and light from the outside to the inside so here we have been represented with four different ways of bringing in natural light inside a space and these are the names given to them so what we have to do is we have to identify which image represents these types of lighting so the first one is called atrium an atrium is a very tall space generally seen in buildings like uh, shopping malls where if you walk in and you enter this internal courtyard space you would notice that the entire stretch you can see you can look to the roof of the building standing at that point and every floor has a cut out there so that is what an atrium is so if we look at our options we realize this is our atrium so in this particular case these are the different floors this is the ground floor and it's cut from the top there is maybe a small glass glass sheet or a polycarbonate sheet any translucent translucent material it will let light through and this entire space gets lit so we know p is c okay so we know option c will be matched with p so we know option c is matched with p because this is a match the following question sometimes it's just easier to cross check with the options and shortlist your things and move on so we see the cp pairing is happening in two options now we'll move on to roof monitors so roof monitors we have two options it could be either r or q so sorry so roof monitors could either be d or a which means it's either this or this so in this both cases we have the floor and there is a cut out on the roof but what is the difference between them this particular sorry uh, move back a little bit okay we'll then look at roof monitors so what are roof monitors are basically a cut out on the roof level and depending on which direction the sunlight hits that space a kind of a reflective surface is built at that point to let light in and if we look at our examples the only thing that matches is option a right because there is a kind of a curved structure which will reflect light into the space and then remaining two we have a clerestory opening a clerestory opening is this particular thing on the roof slabs are at different levels and they have created a horizontal opening with two different slabs at different heights and a light shelf is basically this particular member which is reflecting light bouncing it to the roof and then sending it back inside the room so what happens is they get very soft lighting so if we go ahead and match our options what happens is we have this so we have a q b s c p and d r final d so this is how you go ahead and do that moving on we have another interesting uh, topic this particular section is called sciography it is the study of shadow and light so we have a particular three dimensional object here so we see that there is a base so we have a three dimensional object here we notice that there is a particular base rectangular element with a semicircular scoop in between and two circular projections two large circular projections and two three smaller circular projections and then what they are saying is there is light falling in from the left of the object right 
so when light is hitting from a certain angle shadows will form exactly at the opposite side right so going by that logic i can immediately disqualify c and d because in both these cases shadows are falling towards the left which means the light is towards the right but that's not the case here and in option b the shadows are all going down which would mean that the light is upward again not the answer so by process of elimination we now know that option a is the answer and when you look at the shadows here all the shadows are in this direction so it matches right this uh, circular profile has a shadow going this way this semicircular scoop out has a shadow coming this way and so on and so forth okay moving on we have a particular moving on we have a particular match the following list moving on we have a particular match the following list this has to do with uh, conventions for architectural drawings so we have solid lines dashed lines grid lines and break lines and now we have to match them with what they represent and if you look at the list uh, two we have relatively long line segments separated by zigzag delineate form of objects edge of plane and intersection of planes indicate hidden segments rectangular or radial system of lines for regulating plan so we will start with solid lines solid lines are used to clearly show that this plane ends here to clearly show intersection of planes objects anything that is physically tangible in your three dimensional space is shown by solid lines so we match these two then we have dashed lines dashed lines are those which are hidden in view but you need to show their relative position to the rest of the objects in that flow you have dashed lines to match to indicating hidden segments and then we have grid lines so grid lines basically are the rectangular system of lines which regulate the overall layout again and break lines are lines used to show that there is a break in this plan or this drawing and there is a continuation to that thing and that is done by relatively long segments which are separated by a zigzag line so match this and if we cross check we know that our answer is option a just to give you an idea of how these lines look let me draw a small plan of a room so this being a small room i will show the walls in solid lines this is my entry point so i have shown the door swing in solid lines again and we have dashed lines right so a dashed line would be something which i show this way indicating an overhead slab on one on one of the sides and then we have a grid line a grid line is basically much longer like this so what these do is they have names they have say a b on the one axis and one two on the other axis so they are used to pinpoint locations so if i say a2 then i know that i'm talking about this particular corner basically how your coordinate system works and a break line looks something like this so if i have a further continuation beyond this line then this is how i denote that so with that brief overview of uh, certain topics and concepts that would be coming in the examinations for the architectural aptitude part we have an idea of how things go about and further topics would be covered there are many more questions to be practiced and there is this inherent need to know a lot about different buildings different architects the history of our country the civilizations that were there in the olden days because architecture has been continuing from the time when civilization has started so all of these do come into the curriculum and having an overall understanding a holistic understanding of all of these topics would be really helpful Thank you for watching this video.
be an IRK. Proud to be an IRK. Proud to be an IRK.